My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. Mm, fucking hell. <laughs> My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're going to talk about 3D printed pistons. That was pistons, I don't know why I went all weird. Um, so a lot of people sent me these pictures, this one, 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 of 3D printed parts, valves, uh, pistons, stuff like that. And everyone obviously, you know, I get loads of these comments. Awesome, good, keeps me in the loop, so I don't have to. Um, so let's talk about 3D pistons. 3D printed pistons, not 3D pistons. Bloody hell. Um, so I've got a little, I haven't got the piston with me now, I don't think. No, I was measuring it and stuff like that. But I'll show you a little clip. Um, so this is the BMW G450 uh, piston. Right, here we are back at the bench. Oh, for fuck's sake. Cunt! Right then, so here we are at the bench with the uh, BMW piston that I said I was yapping on about. Um, so let me quickly get my micrometer out. And we can see, hopefully you can see. Oh, my battery's dying. Oh, I can't even get in there, can I? You motherfucker. Can I get in there? No, we're too tall. Yeah, we're just too tall. Any rod, so this is six millimetres. You're just going to have to tell my word for it. And that's when everyone starts screaming. No, Matt, you said you'd prove it. But yeah, this is six millimetres thick. And as you can see, it's just crown. There's just these bits here. They're all at the same depth. It's all just crown is all this in here. If you focus, you fucking dickhead. There we go. Is that focused? Fuck if I know. Right, so yeah, it's just all crown basically. And then there's just this lip on the outside to basically, you know, make room for the ring ring lands and the ring grooves and all the rest of it. But if we look at this, you know, four, depends where we get it. There you go, look, four there. You know, four there, depends how hard I fucking squeeze, that's the problem with guesstimators. About four there, this lip around the outside, that's two. That's a broken bit of the lip, that's two in there. You can see that. You know, there's fuck all to this, it's literally a crown. These bosses, you know, they've got a tapered edge to them. But they're, even they're six mil, so this boss around here is six millimetres, it's fuck all. <laughs> right, so... um What's the problem? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Well, <laughs> is it a good thing? And I, I'm going to guess here that most people are going to think that I'm going to say it's a manufacturing problem, it takes ages, blah, 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 blah. Well, actually, yes, it is, but um, the pistons cost fuck all. Once you've got the machine, that's it. It's all, you know, it's all done. Um... And what's I can't remember what the process is called. It's DL. Is it dual or direct layer something something? I'll put it on the board. I did read it. Like I said, this is not my field at all, and this is a new technology. Um, it's like Matt, you could do your research. I did, but I forgot, and I do this stuff off the top of my head. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, the way it works is that you lay down a nice thin bed of the stuff and then a sintering laser comes in and basically heats everything up so it starts to... So basically the crystals start to form together and then a roller comes in and lays another layer on and then it lasers it and then it does this and it lasers it and it does this and it lasers it. Here's a video. The DMLS equipment. A recoder assembly pushes powdered metal material from the powder supply a uniform layer over the base plate. A laser then draws a 2D cross-section on the surface of the build material, heating and fusing the material. Once a single layer is complete, the base plate is lowered just enough to make room for the next layer. More material is raised from the cartridge and recoded evenly upon the previously sintered layer. The DMLS machine continues to sinter layer upon layer, building from the bottom up. As the part is built, support structures are added to give supplemental strength to fine features and overhanging surfaces. And it just basically builds up the layers in over time. Because yeah, it has its own support material constantly because it's basically just a big vat of material. Um, they can put supports in and all this. There are one or two other ways of doing it, but that layering one I think is the one that a lot of these pistons you've seen that are 3D printed come from. However, talking about manufacturing, 
Um, a lot of these things still need, so they will do everything undersized and they still need machining. So you still need to do the bore, you still need to bore the uh, wrist pin, gudgeon pin um, hull, you know, things like that. So you still need to do stuff like that. So it's either get a billet or, a, you know, a casting or get a casting that is then forged and then you do the machining anyway. And the casting and forging process is extremely quick, especially the forging process. The slugs are brought to the same temperature in an oven. The punch applies 2,000 tonnes of pressure to form it into the initial shape of the piston. About 1 in 10 forgings are dunked in water to check for defects. It stick us, you know, the heat them, preheat them, stick a slug in, bang, it comes back out again, and then final machining. Now, the thing with the 3D printing is, is that it can give you stuff that you could not get with casting. Um, basically, interior voids that are supported. If you've got a 3D printer, you'll know about support material. Um, basically, it makes an outer wall, and then it has just support, you know, it's like an infill that's like 10%, 50%, whatever you want it to be. And it means you can make things lightweight. So that's really the benefit of um, these 3D printed pistons. Now, will we see them in production engines specifically for motorcycles? I don't know. I don't, I, I want to tend to say I don't think so. And the reason why is because um, I cadded up the BMW G450 piston and when you look at this piston, so I'm going to show you a clip because I haven't got it with me now, when you look at this piston there's literally fuck all to it, it's not like um, there's massive voids, there's a void in between the crank and there's the actual wrist pin bosses, um, but <laughs> apart from that a piston is basically just this a crown, um, some wrist pin bosses, they've got some skirts on the side like this, and then they've got some fillets and some webs like that, basically just to knit this all together, and it's very, very thin. And I weighed this piston, so this is a 450 single. I weighed this piston, I think it was 273. Um, that was still one of the wrist, the, one of the wrist pin clips still in it, so 270. Uh, grams and then I cadded it up the best I could um, and I got 268.84 grams in solid works you can basically use the mass properties of it now this is close it's not perfect but then saying that I don't know the exact alloy um, solid works basically works out the volume of it and then puts it against the material that you've made it from that you've basically assigned it and the material listing in solid works isn't that extensive you can plug in your own materials however i do not know what exactly what alloy that's made out of so yeah you know what i mean um it's 273 268 it's close enough you know what i mean as he as canadian and says for the girls he goes out with definitely um so what i did then using that bmw piston because this is a piston that's in a motorcycle that is very skinny and thin what i did was is i then tried using their looking at their um basically the techniques that they use to try and lighten these things i kind of tried to emulate that now you can do studies and make it lighter ish maybe and a bit stronger ish but when i weighed the 3d my, my 3d printed version basically taking a lot of the crown out interior of the crown and some of the wrist pin bosses um, material out on the bottom you do not want to really remove that material so much because um, that's where tensile stress is on the piston the highest and that's going up and that's really what you don't want to be doing um, because materials don't like being pulled compressed not too bad but anyway so um, I got it down to 236 grams, that was removing all the material, uh, which is a decrease, this is a decrease of about 12%. So, you know, that's that's quite a lot, 12% is nothing to be shunned at. Um, 
and the wrist pin itself you know i didn't they've got massively bloody holes in them as it is and when i did a 3d printed version of the wrist pin i could get it down by about five grams um which and i like i said nah any road so what i did was then is i did a static analysis basically locking a wrist pin the wrist pin actually fits in the engine um, fixing the wrist pin in the simulation and then basically just applying I think it was 15, 1500 PSI, um, 1500 PSI, and I compared the two. None of them were near yield or anything like that, but this is the difference. So this is the OEM one. This is the stress you can see in the piston, um, top and bottom. And then this one is my 3D printed version. There's a bit more stress around the crown. Obviously, there's not as much material basically, pro you know, propping it up. Um, so over time, it's going to fatigue a bit more. Eh, you know what I mean? But um, then what I did is I got a... Uh, I basically plotted out um, the piston motion and then piston acceleration in an engine um, based on the actual crank geometry of uh, the BMW crank. So basically, this is the forces. So I'll show you. This, this is an acceleration um, curve of what this piston will see at 15,000 rpm so that's well above and this is how you kind of do it that's well above what this engine is capable of but it just shows you you know basically the acceleration and because we know the mass then we can work out the forces applied to this piston i looked at peak forces and here they are accordingly this is two 2372 newtons and this is 2089 weirdly enough a drop of 12 percent so kind of like a sanity check um, and so it should be because the weight is less by 40 percent the acceleration uh, meters per second is the same and you've dropped the mass by 12 percent so you're going to see a drop in force because um force is mass times acceleration so you expect to see that that's the work that's how you'd work that out or not that's how you'd work it out that's how you make sense of that you see a 12 percent drop in mass you see a 12 percent drop in forces that's kind of what you expect now this is only just basically just compressing uh, no this is actually just the acceleration of the whole thing there is no uh, piston slap put into that or anything shit like that um, but you can see that the forces uh, where they lie stuff like that and um you know we're not including stuff like on the compression so when the piston goes up there's a resistance force which actually makes it go a bit asymmetrical you know it's not a nice pretty curve like that but anyway so yes at 15,000 rpm you're going to see lower forces um which you know fantastic but what i'm saying is is that they've got to now buy new machines 3d printing machines to replace the casting and forging stuff that they have for other processes as well um, you know, for all your die casting and stuff like that, to get these 3D printed machines that are slow at what they're doing, so they need a hell of a lot of them. If you start printing at the beginning of the project, then that's all good because you know you're going to have the pistons ready. But there are four pistons for a, four, a straight four, you know, or a flat four, or whatever, a V, you know, a V4 or something like that. And you know, that's a lot of time. I think they were saying the sources I could find they were saying between. 20 and 30 hours for a print and i'm like jesus that's insane the other thing is as well is if you look at most of the pictures most of the pictures are of diesel pistons because well because they are heavy and that's important for the efficiency of them it's still important for this um but the compression they have to take stuff like that and these are big pistons and there's a lot of bits you can take out like i say this is how much work has gone into piston technology, even from like BMW or Rotax or KTM, whoever bloody designed this piston. A lot of work has gone into that to make it pretty fucking light. 12%, 12% is, you know, it is a substantial amount, don't get me wrong. But, mm, now a lot of them are saying 25%, but like I said, that's 25% probably on that diesel piston. Um, you know, and the thing is, this is from 2014, I think. What fuck knows when the design was from? It's probably from t 2010. There are some fucking tiny, skinny pistons nowadays. 
Um, you know, it's always, always improvising, or not improvising, or there's always a new iteration, they're always improving this kind of stuff. So, you've got to take into account of buying the new machines and the new process. You've got to take into account the time it takes to do it. Then you've still got machine and do all these other processes anyway. Um, the tolerance on these machines is good. It's just a lot of the time the surface finish isn't excellent. But number two is, you know, some of these things have to be fucking spot on. Wrist, wrist, and, uh, wrist, <laughs> wrist pin the holes. They have to be bang on. You know what I mean? The other thing is, as well, is you might say from my little jobby that I did, oh, but Matt, they do this open cell thing. Um, and that's this picture. And yes, I've seen that. The problem with that is, is it, it's kind of twofold. Um, it allows oil to go into, literally into the matrix of the entire piston, removing heat from the piston crown. But if you have a look at the BMW piston crown, most of the piston crown is exposed for that very reason. Um, but there is one other thing as well, is that that oil will then sit in that piston, which increases its inertia when you try and shift it. It's only oil versus aluminium, so the oil wins out. The other thing is as well is thermal mass. That's another problem, and I will follow this up by doing some thermal mass studies like heat flux and heat power and stuff on them on these two pistons I've done. Now, these aren't the exact, you know, you might be able to get 14, 15% out of it. Um, you know, I've just literally it took me like an hour to do. I was just, you know, this is just a demonstration of the OEM pistons nowadays are pretty close. They're not, you know, they're close ish. And the added cost instead of just doing the process you're doing now. Is it really worth it? And these forces and the stress that's applied to these pistons, both are still surviving it. You know, they're not near yield or anything else like that. Is it really worth it? I, I just don't know. And the other thing is as well is that SolidWorks assumes that these materials have, um, you know, a Young's modulus and all the rest of it. Um, throughout the entire material, it's perfect. I don't know what the sintered bonding is like, how good that is when you start accelerating it you know, and applying these forces to it. I don't know if it starts to creep, if it starts to bow out, if not the layers separate, just how the whole thing deforms. And I'm just not sure about that. The other thing as well is with taking all the meat out of the piston crown, like I have done in that example, for this one, it's not the best idea because there's a lot of thermal mass there. And that's basically the flow path. You'll see that you have basically a piston like this with some ring lands in it and some ring grooves and this is the main current path not current path this is the main heat path for um, the heat to basically leave your piston this is why aluminium is always a good choice now there is steel pistons and we'll get to that um, in a separate video but um, you know this is the most heat path and if you start chewing shit out of this these are choke points you know what I mean the cross-sectional area of that isn't what this used to be and they're choke points and are these as good at thermally cooling as, you know, regular pistons? I would love to get my hands on one of these pistons, but probably a fat chance of that. Um, you know, but yeah, it's one of those things. It'd be loved. It, it needs more work. The other problem as well is, is the materials. So they are restricted almost. So they can do aluminium, they can do copper, they can do titanium. They can do all these things. Your choice of alloys, though, is a bit of a funky one. It's not just about supplies. If that process lends itself um, in brittlement, stuff like that can be issues and so on. Any road. So that's just a bit about 3D pistons. Yes, you can make them lighter. Is it going to get into mass production? They've already done a lot of work to make these pistons really light. So pff, who knows? Hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit.